A few videos ago, I was discussing voltage standards, and I showed this standard. Now, it, it's not functional because it has a dead battery. This was shown in a video talking about the accuracy or the degree of confidence you might have in the accuracy of your VOM. And I showed three or four other variants on things like this, all of which offer some sort of a voltage standard driven by a precision chip. So these integrated circuits that comprise voltage standards have probably been around 20 years. Over 120 years ago, This was not the Epley, but one very similar to this was uh, developed by Edward Weston sometime around 1890. And it remained the standard laboratory cell until uh, probably 1980. You'd find these all over the place. Now this one was made by Epley, which I think was the most popular variation of the Weston cell. This one was last calibrated. Oh, it fell off. Huh. Well, there was a handwritten piece of tape on here that said, I believe, 76. And it, the cell was capable of being measured or providing accuracies to five decimal places. I don't even know if this cell is capable of producing a voltage anymore. Well, look at that. 1.018. And when this was The standard, it produced 1.01830. So it's still to this day better than the average $30 digital meter. And I don't know what these cost. So in the 50s, Heathkit, the Heath Company, which operated under the name Heathkit, offered a whole line of test equipment. And one piece of equipment it offered was a vacuum tube voltmeter. I think this first came out maybe in 1949, certainly by 1951. And this is a, a copy of the scale of one made in the 60s, I'm thinking. Calibration instructions for this voltmeter, and the voltmeter was only calibrated in one sense. Uh, the low voltage was adjustable, the 0 to 1.5 volt scale could be internally adjusted. All the higher voltage scales were referenced to the calibration of the 1.5 volt scale. So look what was used. A flashlight cell. These were not calibrated flashlight cells. They were just brand new carbon zinc cells. When a carbon zinc cell, not an alkaline or a mercury or anything else, good old fashioned, the kind that age 
and destroy the interior of the equipment. The new, whenever brand new, voltage is 1.56 volts. Look carefully at this scale. If we multiply by 0.1, the scale becomes 0 to 1. Full scale is 1.5. See this little dot? Right here. Right there. That was a red dot on the meter face. The pointer was supposed to be adjusted to lie on top of that red dot when the meter was set to 1.5 volts full scale and a fresh zinc carbon cell was being measured. 1.5 six volts. So the instructions were to take a flashlight cell, turn the meter down using the calibration pot, turn it up to 1.4, 1.5, and then the red dot. So that was the standard in most, in most actually, radio and TV repair shops in the 50s and 60s. Heath Kitt made some variation of this vacuum tube meter clear up to 1990 when they ceased kit production. This is based on a 1938, I believe, Ballantine design. Weston and Ballantyne were the foundation of voltage measuring devices and standards. Much like Hewlett and Packard were, were the standard in audio oscillators, sine wave oscillators. Nowadays we have a one chip reference It may produce multiple voltages or it may produce a single voltage. Years ago, I bought this circuit board with the intention of finishing it. It was sold by a guy by the name of Joe Geller, or Joseph Geller to be more correct. He operated a place called Geller Labs. And it was a true electronics laboratory, not just a collection of old U.S. and new Chinese equipment, not a hobby shop, a true laboratory. And he was a very knowledgeable gentleman. And he sold these circuit boards for $5. Or he sold the board and a kit and I believe he sold the board fully constructed. Here is a print of what he called the SVR, which probably is standard voltage reference, I don't know. Uh, this one can use either an AD587 or an AD586. The difference is the 6 produces 5 volts and the 7 produces 10 volts. Here it's shown fully populated with a trimmer. Now the trimmer is not necessary. In fact, the, the trimmer and these two resistors are not necessary. Just using some bypass capacitors and a chip, you can get a pretty accurate 5 or 10 volt reference. If you have a calibration facility, 
a friend, maybe a college campus nearby, has a, a very accurate meter, you could put these two resistors and this potentiometer in and fine tune this to a much higher degree of accuracy, but still only 5 or 10 volts. I believe Mr. Geller closed up this operation in 2011, somewhere around there. Here is the schematic with the trimming circuit shown. And the trimming circuit can be disconnected from pin 5 with this jumper. If you, if you do not have the jumper installed, or if you don't have this, the chip is at whatever its manufactured accuracy is. These chips cost anywhere from a couple bucks to a couple tens of bucks, U.S. dollars. The higher priced ones are more accurate and more stable. Now, although Geller Labs closed, like I said, 2011 maybe, this board is still available on eBay as a completed. 10 volt standard. It has the trimming option installed and in, this, and in this photograph selected, that is the trimmer circuit, is hooked to pin 5. This is actually Mark Geller and I believe is manufactured under with his permission. Uh, the board assembled costs $55 plus $22 shipping. If you're interested, the seller is this fellow here. I hope I won't offend Mr. Geller, but I've, I will post all of this information and give you a link at the bottom of the video. I don't know how long he'll, he's going to keep this stuff on the web. And going through this paperwork that I collected for this video, here's a view of the internals of the Epley cell. This is a description of what constitutes a Weston cell. Platinum mercury, mercury sulfate, cadmium sulfate, and cadmium and mercury amalgam. Now, I don't mind having this stuff around. I don't mind having mercury thermometers or mercury relays. But probably it's not a good idea for people that have, the people that are young or have children. And lastly, I have this. There's a notice that Mr. Geller has closed his laboratory. And here's a photograph of a completed board with a 586. But you can see it just consists of a set of voltage in and a set of voltage out, two capacitors. There's absolutely no reason for not building this circuit on a piece of perf board. And I believe if you use a 5 volt chip, it can be powered from 9 volts. Geller recommended that if you use the 7, that is a 587, and get a 10 volt output using 18 volt or two 9 volts in series as an input. I'm not sure whether, well, 
I'm not sure whether a 5 or 10 volt standard is better. I'm going to build it using a 586. And I have a 586. Actually, I can't read the markings on this. It's a 586 something. 